Ayo. Hey man, I don't want to fight you. Okay guys, let's learn and analyze how we can save ourselves learning from Vincenzo's mistakes. The first mistake that Vincenzo did, he did not create a distance. You staying too close to the other person and playing with your ego. You let your ego get you in trouble because you're getting so close to the other person that everything can go wrong. And he was lucky in this time, he just broke his nose. But imagine that the other guy will have a concealed knife and he's just butcher you 10 times before you understand what's going on and the next thing you know you're basically in a cemetery. Hi, you want to Or the other thing can happen is that three of his guys, three of his friends, jumping his body, coming to help him. And that's happened a lot. And now, you know, you start to understand that what you see in movies and what you see in mixed martial art competition is not reality. Reality, you have to create distance and try to survive. Move your girlfriend out of the way, create distance, and this is what we're going to teach now, Vincenzo. And Vincenzo, level five from Rome, a SICAM instructor, and Emilio, level five, combat survival director of Italy, going to demonstrate to you what to do. The very first thing you want to do is to create distance. So if there is any kind of confrontation, staying that close could be disaster. He can have a knife, he can have friends. You don't want to be there. Immediately create distance. So I need you to move away from him, but away is always estimate about body and a half between you and him. You're looking at his size and you create about a body and a half. Don't stand in a fighting stand because naturally, what we saw from the bar, you were standing like a fighter. Why? Maybe you want to scare him. But this is not a good idea. You show him exactly what kind of a fighter you are. If somebody stands like that, I know that he's a striker. Maybe I will change my tactic and use something else. You do not want to show your cards. So stay further away, keep your hands naturally, shoulder naturally, and position normal. Not one leg forward, one leg backward. Just normal because you have the distance. Look straight to his eyes. Hey man, I don't want to fight. Use your voice strong. So everybody in a bar can hear that you don't want to fight. You will have many people will be on your side. I don't want to fight. No. Use your voice. It sounds like now you fear. No, don't show any fear. Okay? I don't want to fight. Your body show, I don't want to fight, but your eyes say, watch out. If you fight, it's not going to be a good idea. Because I'm going to give you a weapon that can save your life. All right? So let's look at the attacker right now, straight to his eye. Don't show any fear and say it loud and clear. Hey man, I don't want to fight. Hey man, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. Do not push him. Now you're the aggressor. Okay, so just create the distance. Go. I don't want to fight. That's let. You look straight to his eyes. Don't show any fear. You're ready now to continue and do the rhyme. Where you're standing now, you're relatively safe because he cannot punch you. Emilio, punch as hard as you can, he's not moving from there. That's no problem for you, you're completely in the green zone. This is called for us a green zone because you're far away from him, he cannot hit you. But if he close the gap 
and you close the gap, this is a distance that has become really dangerous. This is a mid-range, mid-range, go, hooks, hooks, and see what happened. This is where the maximum impact can be at the end of the fist. You do not want to be too close to him. This is considered to be the red zone. But I want to show you what's the other green zone that you have. And I will be you now. So Emilio punching me in a red zone. This is a red zone. I'm going to get punched, right? Now Emilio is going to punch me now. Do you see that the punches really don't have any effect? So the second green zone that you have is being really close to him. So when you go close to him, you have to put your head as close as possible to him and hide it down and hug him as close as you can to, be, to illustrate being close to him. This is not exactly how we're going to do the technique, but it's illustrate how close you want to be in order for you to survive. Because if I'm a bad guy and you come to the other green zone, I will try to push you and punch you again. But if you close, completely close, now those punches have no meaning. I have to do something else now. You have to create now a situation that you move from one green zone to the second green zone, passing the red zone. It's like a tunnel full of sharks that you have to jump over without stepping on the shark. So you do not want to be on the shark. You have to find a way to jump in. So the legs position, from here, you're jumping inside. Your legs have to be one leg forward, the other one going to 90 degree. This is a position that we're going to end, but you have to jump as far as you can in one jump. So you have to start very, very stable and end up very stable. So the beginning, you're standing about shoulder apart and you're quite steady. There is no reason for you to fear about your balance because you don't stand in one leg. But when you jump and land, you should be able to land what we will call the T-stand, which is one leg will be in the front, the other leg will be in the back, 90 degree to the front leg, and they are not one following the other one. The slightly to the side, both legs are bent and you are ending up on both legs. You don't stand on one leg and completely fold because if you're going to miss, you can lose balance and you don't stand backward you're actually standing this way at the end. So let's see the leg position at the natural position. And I need to see a very nice long jump passing the red zone all the way to the green zone, landing in a T-squat position. Show me. See, you have a little bit tendency to shift the weight close to, uh, to him on the front foot. Try to end up here. So the balance is on both feet. Because you know why? In a bar, everything could be wrong. It could be some bottles of, of uh, beer on the floor, or it could be different objects, or it could be also slippery floor from another fight that happened before and some blood on the floor. So you do not want to land on one leg and do not want to shift too much weight to one leg. Stray, stay in the center. So whenever you land, both legs landing this way. Try one more time. Now you're jumping in to a very dangerous position and you have to put something on your head. You have to cover your face. And what we do is you put one hand behind your head. So it's covered the back of your head, all the fingers, but the elbow going all the way to the center. So now it's past your nose as much as you can. The other hand is right in front of you, ready to strike. So you start naturally, but when you go to the rhino, the first thing you have to remember is that any hooks that are going to impact you here or here can finish you. So you have to cover the back of your head. The back of your head is a good place to be knocked out. This area here, if you're going to get punched, it's a knockout. So you have to cover it. Cover it completely. Close your elbow. Bring the elbow to the center of the face. Tuck your chin. But when I say tuck your chin, don't put your head down. Tucking the chin is raising the shoulder and lowering your head, but it's not like going down. What you do is you create more, more space to support that basically your head will not be tilted if you get punched. So this is better kind of tucking the chin than this. Okay, so tuck the chin like a turtle. Let your neck disappear, the elbow going here, and now this hand is your striking hand. You have this one to strike just in case. 
But this is where you're going with a strike. When you go with a strike, this hand is moving with a hip inside the same like you're striking. Strike me. Hard. Harder. Again, why are we punching with open palm? Why? Yeah, you can say. Because if I strike with my punch, I broke. There is a chance that you're going to yeah. break the knuckles. It very, very often happens that people break the knuckles, especially if he is putting the head down a bit, you hit the hard target, you can break the knuckle. You break the knuckle, you cannot fight anymore. This can be knockout too. You have a lot of power into this motion if you do it with open palm. So yes, open palm is better to do it in the street because you don't have time to put the glove or to put and to wrap your hand. So, one hand is here, the other hand is here. And as you jump, you are straightening the arm like you're punching. Where is the shoulder going in? Let's try to do that. Now, in order for us to do that without hurting your partner, for practice purposes, you're going to go past his shoulder here and past his shoulder here. So this time he's going to punch you. And maybe you're going to start punching, you're going to close the gap and jump to the position. Go. Excellent. Again, and right now we're working slowly. Again. So let's say that I'm the bad guy and you're coming on me. And I'm punching you, now you're safe, go back. Now you're not safe. So you have to jump the same way as you came in. You have to jump the same way on the way out. You do not want to step on the sharks. You don't want to be on the red zone. Don't see that. So this time as you're jumping in, you're jumping out. Now, what we said about the green zone, is the green zone is here, or the green zone is here. You don't want to leave even one inch distance. You have to be so close to him that you can smell what you ate half an hour before. Okay, so let's try to do that. There we go, that's the distance. And the jump out has to be much larger. You're jumping over a tunnel, one more time. Here. We have many ways to create damage and many ways to control. But one of the fastest ways for you to survive is to blind them. And blind them is blinding them temporary. Meaning you don't blind them forever. You do blind them for temporary. So what you do is as soon as you're getting into the position and I'm jumping in, this is the position right now, my fingers are going to create this position. I'm going to throw about 40 fingers in a few seconds. What's the reaction of any person that you're going with fingers to the eye? What is the reaction? You have to cover his eyes. Nobody can go to the gym and practice lifting weights to make his eyes much stronger. It's impossible. When you blind them, when you blind the other person, there is no way he can follow you and attack you. You have a better chance to survive. So see how many fingers going like that. Immediately you're going to lose. I didn't want to go in, of course, but imagine that it's going right there. You're going to be blind temporary, which is going to give me enough chance to take my girlfriend or my wife and get the hell out of the bar and survive. No ego. Remember, no ego in the bar. All right, let's see. Lovely. In order for us to do the cat strike safely, in training, we're going... How your finger is going to be? Not stiff, very loose. You're going like whips. You have a better chance to insert them to the eye. So you're going this way as you're jumping back. This time I need you to slow motion, jumping in, cat strike while you're jumping out. Understand? Capiscio. Okay, a little bit further. Body and a half. I said body and a half between you. And in, out. When I say in, the in is really in. Much closer. One more time. Go! Now, you cannot cat strike and stand in one spot. You cat strike while you're jumping back. Even if you just cat strike 10 fingers to the eye. Okay? Go. Go! Whatever you get, you get. But this is the best way to cover yourself on the way out. So, now when you understand of how to jump in and how to jump out, how to cover yourself, you might ask, what should I do if attacking me right hand or left hand would it make a difference? For that, we have few solutions. 
Assume that you're going with the right hand because you think that he's punching with the right hand. So this is covering here and this is going here. This is perfect. But what happens if you are here and he's coming with the other one? All you have to do is to lift this elbow up. So I want you this time to come on the other one. See that? Because of the angle here, he cannot punch me. And I can do the same damage. So let's try that. This time as you jump in, you mistakenly cover your head and going in, thinking that he's going to do right, so you cover your right, and he's coming with the left. Go. That's right. Still you have a cover, and still you can do damage to his eye. But this is not all. Now we're going to show you that you can put a helmet on your head. We call it helmet because it's yeah. like an helmet. One hand on top of your head, the other one covering on the top. In this position, you can safely go inside. Try to go it. And jump in. Go. Now, when you put your hands in this position, not before you start to attack you. So stand, I don't want to fight. And as you enter, you put your hand in a position. Create the damage. Go. Damage to the eye. And escape. Beautiful. You can also do double rhino. If you have good flexible shoulder, put two hands as a rhino. And this is a way for you to attack. If you pay attention now, even if you come with a straight punch, it's impossible to get from here. This time, you do not cross your fingers together because you need to use your hands. So, depends on your flexibility. You either put one on top of the other, or one next to the other. But idea is to cover everything without crossing your fingers together. At the front, you should be able to bring your elbows together. This is a great position to get in, yet you look very innocent, you look like you're defending yourself. And from there you create a damage. So, we have the rhino, we have the double rhino, and we have the helmet. Why we need the helmet? I'll tell you why we need the helmet. Some big, strong guys don't have the flexibility on the shoulder to do double rhino. So when you don't have the flexibility, this is a position for you. Tuck your head, keep your head down, and go inside this way. If not, double rhino is great position for you to do it. Let's see how we're going to drill you to be perfect so you will be able to survive. The first thing we're going to do is practice a bar scene. Now you're going in a bar, you tackle him, something happened wrong, and he become aggressive. You show me what's the first thing you have to do. The first thing you have to do, Please. distance. Let's see that. Okay, go. Hey, man, what are you doing? Create the distance, body and a half. Perfect. The second thing is, we're going to practice a jump together with the rhino. So both of you are going to stand facing this direction. And when I say one, you're jumping forward with single rhino. Doing a nice jump, covering as long distance as possible, creating cat strike and jumping out. Ready? Back to normal, natural position. Complete natural position. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Obviously, after a few hundreds time, you're going to do it naturally so nice. Let's try to do now the double right now. Much further jumping in, much further jumping out. Four! Five! Six! Bravo! Let's try to do now the helmet. Remember the helmet? I don't want to fight. And one! And two! And three. And four. And five. And six. And now we're going to try it for real. 
as close as possible for real because we do want to practice with a friend but we want to consider him a friend also after the practice so we don't want to hurt him so this time he's going to go with real punches real hooks he's not going to pretend but not only hooks only straight punches also he can come hooks he can go straight you do the rhino you're going to close the gap all the way in but you are going to go over his shoulder so you don't want to hit him with his elbow or with his hand, you're just going over the shoulder and cat strike the shoulder on the way out. And you do it full speed, full power, no cooperation. Okay, you sign a waiver, everything is okay. All right, you ready? Create distance, I don't want to fight. Create distance, I don't want to fight. Keep your hands up. Keep I don't want to fight! Go, go, go. Go, again. No. Close the gut even further. further. I want to fight! You really try to punch him. I really want you to try to punch him. Okay. Come on, let's go. I want to fight! That was the best one you did. One more time. I want to fight! It doesn't matter at all if he punch you straight punch, hook, it's always going to work. Rhino is one of the best ways for you to survive a bar attack with a random, random, amazing, strong punches. Many times when he goes to the club, you can find yourself against a drunk person that just take a bottle, break it, and use it. The two typical way to attack with a broken bottle could be either slashing or coming upward. And upward is very dangerous because I'm coming from here to the stomach, and it's like an uppercut. It's coming from nowhere, and it's cut you. Broken bottle could be very dangerous because you have many sharp pieces that can go to your body and it could be death. So we are dealing here not just with a broken bottle coming upward, we are dealing with a situation that you even trap very close to a wall. So you don't have a lot of maneuvering. Remember this is all about confined places and this is what I'm going to use everything I have and what I have now is a wall. The one part that actually stopped me can help me, and this is what I'm going to teach you. How to use the wall to your advantage. What is the first reaction? If you're going to take any kind of object, go to your friend and do that for them. You will see that 99% of them are going to put their hands this way. They're going to retreat slightly and going to put an obstacle between themselves and the weapon. It's very normal. The only problem is that when we put the hands this way, we can be very vulnerable in cutting ourselves here, and the fight is over. So the first thing that you have to learn is to work with the back side of your hand. Again, it's come. This is a better way to use. So you use the back side of your hand as a snap motion, which gives you more time to escape. Here, and escape. And it doesn't matter if you do right and left and left and right, it will be the same. This is not a blocking. This is not here. It's a snap. Snapping, I'm escaping. But here, let's say there is a wall behind me. So it's completely cornered, the way it happened to you. You cannot move. So there is no way to move back. And we don't want to move from here to this side. Because I'm going to his zone. If I'm moving to this side, I'm right in his zone. He can continue cutting me. I want to move behind him. I want to be able to move from here behind him. The problem is there is a wall here. So, unless I am Superman, there is no way I can go here. 
or maybe there is a way. And this is what I'm going to teach you now. So as soon as you do the snap, redirect the hand over here, and at the same time, hit the nose. What you reach at that moment, you bring the shoulder to 90 degrees to the wall, which allow you to continue. One more time. Snap, redirect, and at the same time, push the nose. You see, this is going to be like a strike. At the moment, I'm just gently placing it, but it's like that. See what happened to the body? Which is going to lead you to the next move. But before you try, I need you to also pay attention to the hands that are going to redirect. This is hands are redirecting. I'm putting the thumb here. This is going to give me another safety as I do this move. So put the thumb this direction. Don't just keep it that way. Do you see that? Remember, when you turn somebody's head by pushing the head, you definitely turning his body. The head is usually turning and immediately after that the body continues to follow. Now, you did a great job. I want you to do it one more time slowly. Stop right there. Stop. You did something that you did naturally. You took your stomach back. But you guys, don't forget when you practice, when you do the snap, don't just do that. Move back and take your stomach away because this sharp object is coming to you. Make sure that you retreat and take it back. Also, don't open your fingers. Keep your fingers together. And this is extremely important. If the fingers are open, you can cut yourself in between. This gives you a better chance to survive. Again. Lovely. Good. Now, at the beginning, you don't hold his hand right from the beginning. As you start maneuvering away, then you grab. Go. So this is the first part that you want to practice. The second part is how we take somebody very big and we turn them around. It's very hard to move somebody if he's big and strong. Yes, we're pushing the nose and yes, there is a turning, but you have to know what you're doing. Remember, if I try to push him and he's staying steady and strong, and I'm using now the same power from one angle, you can resist sideways to me, and resist. I will do the same force or even less when he's slightly turned and I'm going to the shoulder blade. The body is turning. So what we are actually doing now, as soon as the knife comes or the object or the bottle coming down, and I redirect and hit here, I can see the shoulder blade. This is my target. I'm going to the shoulder blade, not pushing with the hand, but I'm going to use my rib cage. And the way I'm going to do it, as I'm here, I'm lifting the hand even higher and jumping with the legs, coming to here. So I'm getting to position that my back is on his back, completely back to back. Obviously, I'm going to control his hand, but I'm illustrating now the movement with the legs. One more time. What I'm reaching at the beginning is redirecting the bottle away from me with the snap. Don't help me. Stay away. Up. Whatever happened, happened. Here and here. This is enough for me. I'm now going to push here with my ribcage as I move. But did you see I did a big jump? So the legs cannot take a hesitant move. I cannot do this here and do that and try to push. What I need to do is to push here with my ribcage as I'm jumping. Now I have the turnings that I need while I'm pulling all the time here. But the pulling part and taking away the object will be laid next. So slow, everything slow more gentle. Okay. There is one stage that your back is to his back. Put your head all the way back and lean on him because he could be much bigger than you and you have to use everything you got to finish the fight. Now, ideally, you want to pin this shoulder 
all the way to the wall. So that means that you have to continue pulling the elbow and rip the elbow to your direction. Go. And push with your back and with your head backward. Lovely. Now, let me show you what to do with your hands. Here, here, and you're pushing and you're here. Now, you see the elbow? This is extremely important to have the elbow pointing out. If it's going to be here, you won't feel the same effect. If it's here, all you have to do is to sink your armpit down and lift this part up. You can break it this way, and if you want to take the object, you turn the wrist, slide your hand, and you hold in the bottle. Remember, this is the part that it's not broken. One more time, from here, 90 degree, and you take it. Don't do it to your direction, don't do this. Okay, out of your body. Another option for you, as you're here, you snap it to the wall. Bang, bang. Make sure that your fingers are not on the way. And you can take the object if you're still holding it. Elbow would be nice if needed, but the best is to escape, because he's drunk, and you might have four friends that can come to the party. Let's see it again. This time you're going to do it. Ripping the hand was good. One, two. Rip the hand. And, yeah, that's the one thing that you need to correct, the way you take the bottle away from him. So look. Excellent job here. Excellent job here. Ripping the hand is great. Now, you have few options. If it's already turned so much to here, you can just take it to this direction. If it's turned this way, you take it to this direction. So what you need to do is create a 90 degree. When you create a 90 degree, it's not as strong as before. Remember, make a fist for me. Make a fist. Fist? You, make a fist. And this fist now is very strong. Turn it to 90 degree. Do you feel how weak you are? Yes. So this is what happened. So if it's like that, I'm going here. And if he's here, I'm going here. And I can take it. Let's see. This time, full speed. Lovely, lovely. Now, we brought Marcello back to life. We brought him here to teach him. Let's take him back to his nightmare, like where it's used to be cut, and this time he's going to make it properly and survive. I look cute! This is a very, very, very vulnerable situation. You're standing in the urinal and you're trying to pee and you're holding your pressures. And you know, it's very common that somebody will come behind you and try to push you to the wall and start punching you. And those things happen all the time. And you have to keep certain things in your mind uh, every time you're in, in, in public place. And one of the situations that you have to keep in mind is that balance. When you start losing balance forward, you must have support. So leave your pressures and support yourself first. Otherwise, your head is smashed to the wall. As you've been pushed forward, bend your elbows and fall this way. Don't straight your arm, because if you straight your arm, you can also break or dislocate your shoulder. Keep it as a spring, this position. That's what 
help you later on to push back. So it's almost like doing a push up. You're going here and from here we're going to continue. So this will be on the first shove and I will take uh, Marcello and ask you to stand here. And Vincenzo and Pier Giuseppe will be here as attacker. Okay. So they usually split, they don't come from the same angle, that's even worse because you have two attackers coming from two different angles. You shove them all the way to the wall and do what you usually do, you continue punching him. Not that one person, but two persons. So as you are down to here, the next thing that you have to do is to keep your leg in front to give you support and put two hands on the back of your head. You must support the back of your head. Let's go, let's see it. Okay, now if they punch your body, you're still going to leave. If they punch the back of your head and successfully get there, you can be knocked out. And the next thing you know, you find your head right in the urinal. So you have to be very careful all the time protecting him. As you do so, the next thing you have to do, from here, as I cover, I'm going to use my elbow, come, keep punching me, keep punching. My elbow is going to come from the outside. My elbow will come underneath and around which allow you to come with the other hand to the neck. When you come to the neck, keep the narrow side of your hand, not here, but here, and lift the chin up. When you lift the chin up, now you can sink it in. And is your shield, is your human shield, the other person, person can come, and you should be ready by moving this guy. If you want to punch it, you can kick. You have a leg there, kick with the leg. He comes a second time, push him. Let's take one step at a time. Now, the first thing is, is how to maneuver your elbow and move outside. Let's go. That was too fast. You did right. You did great. But let's help our friends at home to do it properly. So let's do it slowly. Okay. Now. Let's do it one more time. This time, you guys punch him much stronger, much faster. I want you to punch with open hands. So you're here, like that. Okay, you go full force, open hand. Let's go. <coughs> go, punch him. And again, you're punching full force. Go. You see how you maneuver yourself to a much better position. What that teach you? It teach you that when you're working with multiple attacker, you have to line them up. When we are standing four of us this way, right in front of the camera, this is a very dangerous position for you. But imagine that you maneuver yourself to there. Camera, move over there. What are you facing now? You're facing a line. When you face a line, you can deal with each person separately. Now, can you imagine that you take one of them as a hostage? Is a human shield. Now you're in much better position. This is what we do now. Let's see it one more time, then we move to the next step. Go! Nice human shield. In order for you to be able to kick, you want to place it not exactly in front of you, but slightly to the side. And the reason I'm doing that is that usually when you come, you will come to punch me. So if you come to punch me, it's not about my head going here, it's about me going. I'm able to do this leg. So this leg, now from the outside, I can kick. If I will be here, I won't be able to kick. I have to maneuver my leg around. So we can here, okay, punch. Okay, 
Now remember, if you time your kick with his approach, don't do it too early. That was a little bit too early. Wait for him to step in. What, when he's coming and trying to punch you, he cannot punch you unless he's really coming close. When you come close, this is your timing. Wait for him to get in. Do it again. Okay, now, before we're going to show the shoving, which is another thing, if you want to shove this person, you have to make him weak. To make him weak, you can do it in two different ways. See, you holding him here, it doesn't mean that he's not going to fight, he will try to fight. So what you need to do is create enough pressure here on his Adam apple. We don't do now the tight choke. We don't have time for that. I want to keep my hand ready. So I'm keeping the narrow side of my hand and the pressure is anywhere between here and here. This is going to be on his Adam apple and I'm going to pull his chin up and push with my shoulder in this direction. Now you're going to feel the choke. This is much better. I'm making weak and weak. And if I need, I can go here to the eye, so he's not going to fight with me. Which allow me after that to put it. You understand? Yes. Let's go, let's see it. Go! Now, wait for you to come down. That's good. You push them, this is a time for you to look for escape. Remember, multiple attackers, the best thing for you is to escape as fast as you can. Let's bring now Marcello back to the same place that he was not able to pee and see how he's doing it now successfully. We are going to deal now with a chair smash. This is a situation that somebody could be drunk or not, lifting a chair come with this full force on, on your head. Remember that the first thing that you have to remember is how to work with distance. If you learn this DVD well and practice well, and you learn the rhino, you will have a very good start for this move. And I'll show you many different options now how to finish. Here, Giuseppe, come with the chair. Go. Continue with the force. Continue, don't stop. You don't have any force from here, even if you're going to hit me. <coughs> so as closer as I am to him, I have less chance to get hurt. Obviously, when I'm closing the gap, I have to be very careful. This is where the rhino is great, but it's not a typical rhino. We are not just going to cover our head, go up and coming directly forward. It's too dangerous. So what I do, I'm coming some kind of go from here. If you notice, I did kind of this motion. So what happened at the end, my elbow blocking is triceps. From here, it will be stopping some of his momentum, plus the fact that I'm so close to him that now the impact is not so strong. When you do the rhino, in order for you to be on the safe side, you want to step. If you're going to your right side, step with your left foot forward. Yes. That's almost like bringing the side of your back to him. Go again. As opposed to coming with the wrong leg. We will show that just to remember how not to do it. This way you expose more and you can get more impact. So the back to him is better slightly. So turn and showing your back. That's good. Most of the force is disappearing right there. If you block him right here, you 
going to block more of his forces. Now, I wanted to block him more here this time, and you go with more force. Go. <coughs> you lost most of the power right there. At that stage, you can shift your hands to create some damage. And the damage that you can do is if I'm coming and I'm coming in this position, I can go and bring my hands to the head and continue by turning the head this way. If I'm turning the head this way, and the chair, even if you touch me, doesn't have the power yet. Because the power that we have on the chair, hold the chair please, is if I'm here. This distance is really dangerous. Here, there is no impact. So, if I'm taking the head and turning it down, and now turning the nose, and it comes with a full force, it's going to fly. I don't have to do much, because this is his power, not my power. Okay? Mm -hmm. You want to try? Sure. Okay. Now, one of the major problems that we have with training this move is if you don't really, really experience and you're training with a chair, with a partner, there's a good chance that he's going to fall on a chair and he can hurt himself. One thing that you have to remember at the beginning is better to practice with any kind of rubber uh, material or even a ball. And after that, when you a little bit more experienced, you can work with a chair. Make sure that you let go with the chair and don't fall on the chair as you fall because the, the dangerous is not for Elon, the one who's going to be attacked, is for the attacker. That was great. That was a great move. That was a long time. It was the right timing and now I want to see it in full speed. That was perfect. Let's take Ilan back to the bar and see how he's smashing chair on somebody else's head. Slushing. Slushing is extremely, extremely dangerous. It's also very, very scary. You see a shiny knife moving in front of you and you are absolutely out of focus. It's very, very hard to think what to do when you see a knife like that. So number one, don't concentrate on the shiny part of the knife. Look all the time on the wrist of the hand that's holding the knife. You will have a better chance. If you can maintain distance, but we're finding in confined places now, we don't have a lot of distance. So I'm going to teach you a great technique called the whiz. And we will show you a few variations of that and when you're going to practice and that you see how simple yet very effective the whiz. Any slashing that's coming, and Marcello going to do the slashing, is a back and forth move. And it doesn't matter if it's going to be a short or a big one, it doesn't matter if it's going to be up or down or cross, it's still going to be back and forth. There is a back and forth move that's always going to happen with the slashing. So Pierre Giuseppe, the first thing you have to remember is that you have to time yourself. And one way to time yourself is to not be a big target standing here and looking at the knife and get cut. Sometimes when you don't have a lot of space to run away, 
you have to sway. So swaying is moving your body, especially the upper body, but if you come to the lower body, you have to do the lower body. Now you notice that I'm crossing my hand, and this cross hand will help you a lot. So you want to keep your fingers together and cross your hand. So if the knife is coming around my neck, I'm moving here. One more time. And tuck your chin. If you try to close the gap at the right timing, you're going to find yourself either here, on this side, or you might sometimes, because of the speed, find yourself here. Not the most preferable place to be, but in speed everything can happen. So Pierre Giuseppe, this is time I'm going to teach you how to do the check. You're going to find yourself either from the inside or from the outside. And we're going now to sway the same way, let it pass you, and when you jump in, Find yourself around his shoulder blade, around his triceps, blocking with the narrow side of your hand this way. Or let it pass you, pass you, go from the inside. So either you're going from the outside or you're going from the inside. But remember, when you decided to go in, it's not half hand, it's like a big jump in. So when I let it pass me, I'm jumping to here because if I can escape from here, perfect. I can do the same move, pass me, and going here, push, run away, and everything is good. This is my first choice. My second choice is when I am escaping to here and going here, I will damage, run, and escape. Fine. But when we are in confined place, sometimes we cannot escape. This is where the whiz will come to play. Timing was good, good sway. And to illustrate the situation, first of all, come back. When you can start to move away, move away by not keeping your hands this way, but this way. And also, don't just look at him. If he is already a little bit away from you, look to the right, look to the left, maybe some of his body is coming. So you have to watch that. So this time you're ending up either from the outside or from the inside. From the inside you cannot push him away. We're going to show you another tactic. At the moment, just get to the checkpoint. Okay. Right? Let's see. Whatever happened, happened. Go. Okay. You got in, but you didn't turn your body. Meaning, you kept your right foot back. But don't give you a good chance to work with him, because right now he can pull his hand easily and finish it. So what you need to do when you go this way, you don't hear. So my right foot is going all the way in. I have a better chance to grab the hand and fight under. Okay. Oh yeah, that's much better. Okay, and now let's do it either from the outside or the inside. You couple. Lovely. Keep your fingers together. Yeah. And from the outside and from the inside now. If you understand the positioning of your body, at the moment, put it aside and we concentrate only on the mechanism of the whiz and then we combine it together. So what is a whiz? As I taught you before, and you saw it, everybody that got this DVD, it's a very valuable lesson. It's very strong when you hold the knife here. But if the hand is 90 degree, it's not that strong. Okay, you guys at home try to fist, feel how strong you are, move to 90 degree, and see how weak you are. So what we do is we're changing the angle from, 90, from this position to 90 degree. How? If I'm ending up here the way you're ending, there are two things that might happen. One, he will pull his hand to stab you, because it's very normal that I will try to slash him, and he block, block, uh, pull to stab him again. That's very normal that it might happen. So either he pull, 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 and he bring my hand very close to here, or I myself move to here. 
But in both cases, for practicing purposes, from here, you slide your hand very close to the knife, grab around the knuckles, here. Even on the expense that you're going to cut your finger. Remember, better cut here, than a cut here. So, from here to here. The other hand, going to do this motion. I'm going to put it as an inch here, changing the direction of his hand to 90 degrees. But not just put it, I'm actually going to use it as a force. Now, if at the same time I'm sliding my hand to the knife, this is what happened. If you pay attention, you notice that in this case I don't even cut myself. But there is no guarantee. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But remember, with knife there is always possibility that you're going to cut yourself. So one more time. One, both hands moving to here. Grab as close as you can to the knuckles. Bring the other hand from the other side. And you hit here. Now, why am I lifting my elbow? Why not to keep it down? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? Well, because I want to insert the narrow side here and be able to bend it. If I insert this position, it's not going to bend so easily. So here, I can actually bend it really nicely. So this hand is going in as a pulling motion while you're moving to the knife. One more time. One and two. When you have the knife, create distance, escape if you can, or fight with the knife if needed. It might be in your house, you might want to kill your family. In that case, you just have to finish the job. So let's look at that. One more time. Good job. And I don't want speed at the moment. I want to do it slowly. Because we're helping our friend at home to be able to learn it. Okay, what was missing is that you didn't take a few inches away, meaning I don't need to see all the jumping and moving. I want you to stand here, get here, move your hands here, grab here. Now, I don't want you to place your hand here. I want you to take a few inches away and come this way. This is going to make a tremendous difference in the pulling power. No, no slashing. Just get to 90 degree of it. Good, slide your hands. Now, with this hand, grab as close as you can to the knife and pull. Lovely. When you start the pulling here, you are turning with your body, which creates the power. So, in a way, you enter, so you 90 degree to him this way, when you finish, you are 90 degrees in this way. Okay, so let's see how do it. Lovely. Beautiful job. Beautiful. You can either do the same thing that you did, or you can do also what we call the figure four. And the figure four is, I will show you. I'm passing it, going here, and I'm doing this, which gives me even more power to pull. How I do that? The same thing as we did before. I'm swaying, I'm here, I'm holding. But this hand, when I pull, I pull it up. Upward, and close this hand on top of that. I don't need to close much, just a little bit. Even it could be like that. And now when I turn, there's a tremendous pressure on him. I don't come toward him. Because if I come toward him at that stage, I'm bending his arm. When I bend his arm, he's stronger. What I want to do is to stretch his arm. In one of the demonstrations in this DVD, you see that when somebody holding a ball this way, he's not so strong. When he's here, he's very strong. So when the arm is contracted, he's stronger. I don't want to come here. From here, I want to go away from him. So when you do the close hand or the open hand, go away. And when you go away from him, you have a better chance to pull and stretch his arm, which we're going to make him weaker. You want to try? Yeah. Let's go. Okay. 
That's it. This is happening. You push him and go for the knife. The main thing is to get the object first. Let's do it one more time. Double. Let's say this is elevator. Okay. There is no escape. This is it. That's what you got. Work. Lovely. You are in elevator. You cannot escape. Stay there. One more time. Good. Now you have the knife. You can have a threat. You don't have to kill him. But make sure that now you take him through. Could be a situation that you're going to end up on the inside. So, for the uh, illustration for the camera, you're here. What we did before, we are actually on this angle from the inside. One of the best ways to shift your hand to here, all the way close to the knife, and turn it slightly out. In most cases, it's out because if somebody comes with a slashing, this is the position. So, you don't have to do much. You hold it here and grab it on the knees. Okay, let's see it one more time. You bring your hands over here, grab it close to the knife, bring the hand under, pull it. So even if he's holding really tight, it's very hard for him. Now, let's say you really, really have a problem to see your blood all over the place. You don't have to hold the knife. You don't have need to hold the fingers and half on the knife. You can hold only the finger. And by doing that and by pulling, you're going to take it. So one more time. Here to here, he will have to let go. If not, he's going to break his thumb. So, one more time from the inside one, takes the knife underneath, two, with a finger, and you have the knife. Think you can do it? Yeah. Very yeah. confident. Let's see. Okay, what you're missing is with the hand that's grabbing here, slide it as close as you can to here. Don't just hold the wrist, more to here. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. Now, this time I will let your partner try to do the move. So do the slashing hand and you're going to do it full speed. Hold the knife, slashing. Go. Is it from the inside or the outside? Let's go again. The whiz. All right, now let's see if the whiz is going to make Pierre Joseph a wiser now when he go back to the bar. Hey, what's wrong with you? Go back, man. What? Go back, man. Come on. Fuck you! Problem here. Now we are talking a situation now that the gun is pointing at you, but you have a family member 
on your left and you have a family member on your right and you happen to like those family members. Any move that you do to the side can kill them. That means you really have to think about the line of fire. And the move that I just show you will make sure that the gun will go all the way up. Traditionally, the move was going up, holding here and pushing the gun to this direction. It's look impressive, but if the guy is extremely strong and I wanted to hold it tight, I have to fight with him to be able to do it. Now, not all the time we are the strongest. And why it's so hard to do, I'll tell you why. The best is to look at the position of the fingers. You have here now one, two, three, and all the support from here is going to give you resistance. Those four fingers, beside the fingers that in the trigger, are going to give me a hard time if he's stronger than me. Plus, I also need to hold the hand in a very particular way. I have to hold it with the hand from the outside here and this hand here. If I will do the opposite way and he's strong or wide here, my hand will slide. Since Sikhem, we always train under stress, and under stress you really cannot think too much, you have to act, and you cannot think right or left. We are acting differently, and I'm going to show you a move that you can do right or left, regardless of where he's holding the gun, and regardless to the how much he's stronger than you. This is what we do. The first thing, Elon, that you should have done is make sure that you move all the structure up. So it doesn't matter if you put the right hand underneath and the left hand on the gun, or the left underneath and the right on the gun. In both cases, you want to put this structure and lift it up. This is the very first thing that you have to remember to do. Now, when I said lift it up, the best to lift it up to make sure that nobody gets shot is to use your thumb. And using the thumb, meaning insert your thumb here, if you can. It's not a must, but it will help you even to be more angled up. We call this technique kill the bird as, as a joke in CKM, but it's, this is what it is. Um, if I have to kill somebody, I will kill a bird. Do you also bend your knees? No need. You don't no need. need. Right? Good question, but no need. It's much faster to do this than start to bend and do that. And of course here you don't have to bend at all. Yes. All right, so from here to here. At that stage, I'm going to teach you how to take the gun regardless of the strength. Let's see. Okay, I need you to stretch both of the hands up, so basically I need to see the gun going there. Okay, you know what? I'm a family member of yours. I'm standing behind your shoulder. Okay. Do that. Up. That's so much safer now. Good. One more time. Lovely. Beautiful. You are very quick. So now, at that stage, we're going to teach you how to take the gun. And it will be based on the same principle of other techniques that I was teaching you on this DVD. All of you remember the fist. And all of you remember that when you move to 90 degrees, you get a lot of uh, pressure and you have less strength in this position. This is what we do here. I'm lifting it up. At that stage here, I'm going to turn the gun to the direction of his face. Now look what happened to the wrist. It's already bent. So when this position is here, I'm just pulled and the gun is in my hand. Now when I do it fast, it's look like that. But the mechanism is very simple. It's up, turn the gun 90 degree to him, and this going over there. You don't have to be strong. Now you hold it strong this time. <coughs> it doesn't matter how strong it is. So that means, if you want to have even better kind of pulling power, don't just place your hand here, snap it. Okay, so those moves will happen at the same time. Way above your head, way above anybody around you. 
Now, you can ask what would happen if he's holding, and you by mistake, and there is no mistake in CKM, the only mistake is practice the wrong, the wrong system. In our system, we know right and left working is the same. So, this is what considered to be the opposite hand. How can I do that? Same, I'm lifting, turning, and I'm getting the same thing. As long as you remember that you're turning the muzzle to his face. Okay, so, and you still have the same position. Wanna try? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't want speed. I need to see the 90 degree on his hand, so lift it up. And you need to, as you lift it up, to turn this way. Okay. And now take the wrist. Okay. Um, let me hold the gun. Okay? I'm not going to pretend. Okay. See, you're trying to do the old way, which, ah, oh, turn so it to as I go it here, and now pull the wrist. I'm not going to cooperate with you. If you do try it, it's going to happen. Oh, I felt it now. There's nothing I can do about it. Now, think about it for a second. We are nice to each other in training, but in reality, you don't have to be nice to each other. So when you do this and turn, let, it, let go for a second, I'm not going to work with palm. And this is coming here, you can go right to space. Nothing wrong with that. But obviously, guys at home, be very careful. So we're going way above the head. So you're going here, turn at 90, and don't focus on pushing this part, focus on pulling this part. The pulling is what you need to do. That's right, because remember the principle of 80-20. 80% pulling, 20% pushing. Now, you want to do it in full speed properly. Don't forget to turn the gun. Lovely. You felt it? Yeah. And let me see if you shoot me. I'm behind you. Bye! Excellent. Now, do it with the opposite hands. Oh, you have some pain in one hand today. Try it out. Lovely. It's all about the pulling. Yes. A little bit higher. So what you need to do is to raise the gun slightly higher, above your head. Wonderful. Let's take Ilan back to where he was killing so many of his friends and see how he's become a hero. Enjoy the club. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry, my friend. Too no, drunk. no, no, no. You're too drunk. Go, go. I kill you! Whoa, 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 what's the problem here? Take it easy, man, take it easy. Stay there, stay there. I need backup, right now.